All right. It is really late Wednesday night. Uh, I think technically it's actually Thursday as I'm recording this, but I'm recording this because Pastor John Lindell calls on Mark Driscoll to repent. At least that's the name of the video that James River Church, the church that hosted this Stronger Men's Conference this past weekend that had Mark Driscoll, you know, kicked off stage because he was calling out this circus performance, calling it, you know, the spirit of Jezebel and uh, equating it to uh, basically a strip performance. Uh, It's yeah. Right. Like all that, all that we, everyone on the internet, as far as Christians goes, you guys know that. All right. But now John Lindell, the pastor who brought Driscoll back on stage after yelling at him from, you know, uh, uh, from the audience, uh, brought him back on stage. And they had this weird conversation about how you shouldn't criticize a man with God's anointing on his life. Uh, well, now he's criticizing, you know, this man that he did say before had God's anointing on his life. Uh, weird how some of these prophets uh, don't don't know when that's happening, even if it's just like a couple days difference, just a little side note, but he put out this video. Uh, I'm going to try to walk through some of the segments. So it's going to be a little choppy here. Um, especially since it's really late, (laughs) but, uh, just a little bit of context for where we're going to start in this video. It's a 38 minute video. So that's why we're not watching the whole thing. Uh, but uh, basically he talks about the, the guy, the acrobat and how he's a Christian, which I talked about on Monday, that might be his story. And a lot of people were so ready to throw his past in his face. And, um, you know, I said, maybe, maybe he's a Christian. I don't think he really was asking for this. Uh, again, I'm not saying like everything was right with that thing. I did talk about on Monday, you know, unbuttoning your shirt to the music, you know, it raises an eyebrow for me. All right. That's, that's weird. Not only is it just weird to have like a circus performance at a men's conference, like you're talking about being stronger men and you got to entertain them like they're children. That's kind of weird. Um, but you know, whatever. Uh, but there's also, you know, just a little bit of weirdness to the idea of doing it in that way. But that might be, you know, some of those muscle memory stuff coming back. But I said, you know, he might be a Christian. His life might have been changed. And it's a weird thing for the Internet to be throwing it back in his face. That would hurt. Right. If any of our sins, you know, we're all if you're a Christian, you know, those sins are forgiven by God. To, but to have those thrown back in your face, that's that's hurtful. Right. Like you wouldn't want that for yourself. So I think we could all kind of sympathize with that. Um, but uh, he talks about that and how Driscoll knew that. Uh, but then he talks a little bit about what happened after uh, he kicked Mark off the stage. Uh, and this is where things get interesting. Let's take a look here. To find out more about Alex or even contacted Alex's manager. But it seems that Mark is more interested in the controversy that will sell books, gain clicks, and increase donations to his ministry. Big words. Let me provide some background on what happened at the Stronger Men's Conference on Saturday morning. All right. When I came into the green room, I visited with Mark Driscoll. We talked for about 20 minutes. He talked about how much he loved our family, loved the church, and how he was a few years behind me in age, but wanted to get together in the coming months to discuss church leadership transition so they might learn from us. As well, we talked about what he would be speaking on. He stated that session one would be about Ahab and Jezebel. At no time during our conversation was there any mention of his angst over Alex Megala's performance or his concerns about the event. Mark could have easily mentioned Alex, but he did not. Hmm. After I stopped Mark's message and calmed the crowd, I ran backstage to find Mark and was told that he had left for the airport. I ran into the parking area and Mark got out of the car. All right, let's stop right there. All right, this is Mark Driscoll. All you Mark Driscoll fanboys who've been sending all kinds of nasty messages to me this week, this is the guy that you're defending. All right, the guy who will throw a pity party and, you know, bust up the entire world because you say he's wrong. That's Mark Driscoll. 
All right, that's that's at least the testimony of 30 plus elders who signed a document stating so. All right, uh, and the witness of so many congregants in the rise and fall of Mars Hill. I know as I say that, some of you clicked off the video. Fine, bye. Uh, but there's lots in there that I think a lot of people just want to avoid because they like this guy. They like what he's saying now. They like that he's talking about being a real man and being courageous. And here he is speaking at the Stronger Men's Conference. Well, here he is getting in a car and you know basically taking his ball and going home because he was told to stop. This doesn't sound like the guy who got up off his knees and said, I received that, Pastor John. Doesn't look like receiving it when you're getting in the car headed home. All right, the guy is throwing a fit. He's throwing a temper tantrum and he's headed home. That's not a real man. A real man, when confronted with something like that, with someone who, again, I talked about this on Monday, close relationship between John Lindell and Mark Driscoll. If your buddy yelled at you to get off stage wouldn't you be like, we're going to talk about this? Even if you're angry, wouldn't you be like, let's have a conversation about this? Why would you call me out like that? I wasn't going to go further than that. Or maybe you misunderstood what I was saying. If it was your friend, wouldn't you do that? Not Mark Driscoll. He's getting in the car. He's done with it. He's going home. As he came up to me, he said, well, that didn't go very well. Understatement. To which I responded, Mark, you were out of line. And he said, no, I don't think so. I said, Mark, Matthew 18 is really clear on this. Yes. If you were offended by last night's performance, you should have talked to me about it first. Because in Matthew 18, it says, if your brother sins against you, go and show him his fault. Just between the two of you, if he listens to you, you have won your brother over. To which Mark responded, well, I couldn't help it. The Spirit of God came upon me. My response was, Mark, that's not true. The Bible says the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Oh, snap! The same thing so many people have said about some of these guys. John Lindell is no saint, okay? He lies about all kinds of miracles. He talked about like a, I think it was a woman's, toes growing back and said he has proof but he's not going to share the proof of course um because you know then you wouldn't be able to exercise your faith it's funny how all that works <laughs> it's just like we could prove it but we're not going to uh so he he does that kind of stuff but for him to just be like hey you know if the word of god doesn't say it maybe it's not you know the holy spirit speaking to you is very interesting to me They liked it. They ate that one up. So don't say you couldn't help it because that is not what the Bible says. Agreed. And the Holy Spirit is never going to encourage you to do something that contradicts his word. Agreed. I told Mark, I love you and I want to continue to be your friend. Mark said, well, I've just crapped all over your event. And I said, I still want to be your friend. Mark responded by saying that he loved our family and the church and would never want to hurt us. Okay. We suggested having a picture taken that would show us together. Mark insisted that he be the one who posted it first. And you can see it there. I, I don't know. Like, I believe in a sovereign God that he doesn't make any mistakes. But sometimes I feel like I was born in the wrong decade. Like I should have been born in like the thirties or something. Cause I belong in the sixties, you know, like I, I, all this stuff about like, we'll put out of, we'll put out a picture and we'll quiet all the rage online. And, you know, like just kind of smooth things over is just so weird and cringy to me, but it is interesting that Mark Driscoll was the one saying, I'm going to share it. I'm going to share it. Now, maybe that's just him saying, because he has the bigger online platform, Maybe that's it. I don't know. But uh, it kind of fits with everything, you know, his track record of being like, I want to be the bigger man. And it is obvious that he collabed us on the photo. So it's a post by Mark. The picture was posted shortly after it was taken. At that point, I was thinking that things were settled. Right. When Mark returned to Scottsdale, Arizona, he sent me the following text at 5.10 p.m. 
this is where things get really weird for me. <laughs> like, all right, as I'm recording this, it is Wednesday night slash Thursday morning. And um, we're only like four or five days into this. I don't know. Math is hard. Um, but like, it's weird that we're already at the point where we're sharing text messages from stages. Like that's, that's really weird. I, I always feel weird when anyone reads text messages and stuff like that, but it's odd to me, uh, that they're doing that. But essentially what Mark is going to say is that he loves him and he values him. Uh, but then he's going to prove it wrong in some ways. So, uh, I'm going to skip ahead just a bit. With min- within minutes after sending that text, the post with our picture together was removed from Mark's account. On Sunday evening at 7.43, Mark texted Pastor John, thank you for your response. I love you and your family as well. My plan is to be saying and doing nothing but praying. I texted back less than an hour later at 8.36 p.m. Mark, thank you, that's great. I love you. Do you see the deception? Mark expressed love on the one hand, but took the picture down. He knew that Alex was a Christian, but it would seem that storyline would ruin his ability to generate clicks and sales. Instantly on Monday, the word spread like wildfire about Alex. One can only wonder how that happened. Uh, I think this is just him being older and not knowing how the internet works. Uh, People will find that out. Like there's, there's already like probably a hundred people looking into the history of John Lindell after posting this video, (laughs) you know, like it's just the way the internet works. They want to know all of your past, all your deepest, darkest secrets. So, uh, I don't know if Mark Driscoll leaked that or, uh, what, but I'm pretty confident that someone would have found it anyways. To take it a step further, Mark had not only texted my son, David, but he called David on Saturday night at 11.37 p.m. and left this voicemail. Hey, buddy, this Voice is Driscoll. Bits. I love you very much. I feel like throwing up and crying. I'm very, very sorry. I sent you some text. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to say any of that. I'm not going to share any of that. I'm not going to do anything. I love you guys and guys. And I wish I was wrong, but I have my team quadruple check Check it unless they have completely messed up. This is a major crisis for you and James River. And so, yeah, just check your text thread. I CC'd your dad. I'll do anything I can to help. Uh, I do want to stop and note a few things. Um, One being that that little cut after I CC'd your dad, like it is not a natural cut like uh, of going from one scene to another that that audio you know i i care about audio sometimes my audio messes up but uh i care about audio and listening to it there's a cut there so uh something that he said live he didn't want in this video so there was some editing that took place i don't know what was said but he definitely doesn't want anyone on the internet to take it and run with it I'm not going to say a word. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to do anything. I've been the guy who is getting melted to the ground. The very last thing I want to do is be anything but a shield to love and protect you guys because I care very much for you and you guys mean the world to me. So I just wanted you to hear it from me that I'm very devastated, very broken heart. I love you guys very much. I'm for you. And if there's anything I can do to help without making things worse, I'm open to that. Know that I feel absolutely terrible and I'm praying. Yeah. And I just really appreciate the way you treated my son and son-in-law. You're a good man, David. I love you, buddy. Thank you. Mark called David again on Monday at 11.25 a.m. but left no message. Given Mark's response to me, I suggested that David should, as a courtesy, return Mark's call, which he did at 12.03 p.m. on Monday. On the call, Mark reiterated what he said in the voicemail on Saturday night. 
He ended those statements by saying, I am not wrong. He followed that up by saying the, follow to Dave, the following to David, and David, this is as David remembers it. Number one. There. I do want to say for someone who's said at the very beginning that he is applying Matthew 18, uh, it is weird for him to share what someone said and like to their best recollection of hearing on a, a phone call that he wasn't privy to, or at least that's what he's claiming to be not privy to being in on that call. Um, this is all super cringe, all super cringe, all super weird. I actually don't even want to show <laughs> that other than saying that he is claiming that Mark Driscoll called uh, David. So if you don't know James River Church, uh, which why should you? You really shouldn't. <laughs> but John Lindell is the pastor, has been the pastor there, and is in a transition uh, to have his sons, both of them, uh, so David and Brandon, to take over his church, in, I think in like 2025. So it's supposed to be both of them. And uh, essentially what Mark Driscoll says to David is that it's his turn. He needs to step up. He needs to, uh, you know, right the wrongs that are going on in this church and that Brandon is involved in all kinds of sin. Uh, I think the phrasing that John Lindell uses is dark sins. Uh, so who knows what that is, but he uses the example of watching uh, the performer, Alex, uh, the, the acrobat, uh, watching that and not thinking anything was wrong, that that's proof that he was involved with dark sins. I don't know whether that's true or not. To me, that's gossip, but that's what Mark Driscoll uh, said, apparently. But Mark was unwilling to repent and still has not repented. As well, Dr. Jimmy Evans informed Mark that what he was doing and not stopping these things regarding Alex past and James River Church was resulting in death threats and horrible abuse to our James River Church receptionist. I believe it. So much so that for the first time ever, we shut down our switchboard and put all calls to voicemail. This is what I've said so many times here on the channel. You, Some of you guys know exactly what I'm going to say. Followers go further. When you have an extremist like Mark Driscoll saying stuff like... Go back in and watch the clip. Maybe you shouldn't, but if you go back and watch the original clip that was circulating about Mark Driscoll saying these things and getting kicked off the stage, there were FU chants in that crowd of stronger men uh, about a pastor saying, get the off the stage. All right. That that's Mark's fan base. All right. Uh, I, I totally believe what John Lindell is saying here. Uh, because I know for myself, I've been getting nasty messages. I've been getting nasty comments uh, ever since Monday uh, and, you know, a huge surge. So thanks for the views, I guess. Uh, but no thanks for the comments. <laughs> like some of these comments have just been really, really extreme. And like, I'm used to that. I'm here on YouTube. Like it, you're just going to get that if you do YouTube, especially if you do Christian YouTube, which is uh, pretty sad. It's a pretty sad state of affairs, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. And you get that when you do online stuff. So I totally understand John Lindell being like, Hey, we are getting death threats over here. I believe it because Mark's fan base is crazy. They are all crazy and they're following a crazy man and, uh, they're going even further. And so I totally believe that when he says that they've gotten death threats, I believe it. Our receptionists were frightened and we're in tears. Yesterday, I was preaching in Arizona where the Assemblies of God General Superintendent, Doug Clay, was also preaching. Following our preaching, he asked to visit with me and said that the national headquarters of the Assemblies of God had also received violent threats and such disturbing interaction with callers that they too shut down their reception. To this point, Jimmy encouraged Mark to say something
to calm things down. To this point, Mark has done nothing to calm down the vigilante acts of his followers. There it is. That, I think, is one of the most damning things in this video about Mark Driscoll. Honestly, the stuff about like the text messages and, and the voicemails, I know that everyone's going to go to that because it feels spicy to be in on some of those conversations. Um, but honestly, this is the biggest thing. Because Mark Driscoll knows exactly what he's doing. When he says something extreme, he knows that extreme people will follow him. It is attracting these people. This is his fan base. This is his target audience. This isn't a mistake of just like, oh, I said this, and now I've got all these people who are are following me. And like, oh, man, like these, these guys are not the guys that I was looking for. These are the droids he was looking for, uh, and they are extreme. And for him to know that, to keep pushing his Jezebel spirit stuff and doing his streams all week. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's adding fuel to the fire and that fire is extreme and dangerous and he has done nothing. And he's been told, please do something. We are getting death threats and the real man, Mark Driscoll won't do a thing. He won't help. He won't put out anything. Maybe tomorrow after some people will probably push back and he'll rethink his strategy and all this because John Lindell went public. Maybe he will put out something on Thursday, uh, but I kind of doubt it. Which brings us tonight to the third step in Matthew chapter 18. That's not, that's not how church Matthew 18, 17 says, if he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, treat him as you would a pagan or a tax collector. That means if he doesn't listen to the rebuke of tonight, any believer should not have anything to do with Mark Driscoll. He's wrong. <laughs> like uh, He is wrong. This isn't how church discipline works. Church discipline is for a local church. John Lindell is not Mark Driscoll's pastor. He is not an elder within Mark Driscoll's church. Uh, he cannot just call him to repentance like that and be like every no believer should interact with him. Uh, here's here's where I want to just kind of land the plane a little bit. There, he, there's more to this video. You can go and watch the rest of it. But basically, this is like the conclusion is that no one should listen to Mark Driscoll. I agree with that sentiment. Because of his theology, because of his past, because he's disqualified, he's never repented for anything that happened at Mars Hill. Uh, John Lindell shouldn't be surprised that Mark Driscoll is acting like Mark Driscoll. He's Mark Driscoll. You know, you don't get mad at uh, an animal for acting a certain way. It's an animal. It's Mark Driscoll. He's going to act a certain way. He's going to live by his nature. And for you to excuse that nature for so long doesn't mean that he's changed that nature. So for him, you know, you get what you get. You, uh, play stupid games, win stupid prizes, right? Like that's the phrase that comes to mind for me. Uh, so I don't think he should be surprised. But really what's happening here is John Lindell is trying to fire back, uh, maybe to stop some of these threats and stuff like that. I think that's part of it. Uh, but he's firing back because he feels threatened. He is one of those guys, like he said on the stage, that touch not God's anointed, you know, like that uh, you should not criticize a man with God's anointing on his life because it will lead to unbelief and a barren life and all that stuff. That's what he's doing here. He's saying that Mark Driscoll isn't going to end me. You know, I'm going to end him. That's essentially what's going on here. And the world is just watching, I guess. Uh, so... I don't know how helpful this was other than showing some of the details about Mark Driscoll and confirming what a lot of us already knew about Mark, uh, that he is two faced. All right. History has proven that that's not gossip. That's, uh, basing it off of, you know, the signed document of 30 plus elders and witness of his congregation. Uh, there are lots of people who could testify to that, to that fact. Um, and what it says to me is that he hasn't changed for anyone who's saying, Oh, he repented. Doesn't look like it. He's doing the exact same stuff. You know, he's getting in the car. He's not dealing with, you know, this conflict and with his friend, like, it's not even like a stranger. It's a friend, uh, someone who stood up for him when no one else would. And he's just getting in the car and going to the hotel. 
like he's just done. Like that's who Mark Driscoll is of threatening to use what he knew that this Alex uh, guy, this acrobat was a Christian. He was going to use it to his advantage. He knew that he is leveraging stuff for the sale of his books, as John Lindell says, uh, for for his platform to grow. You should not be dealing with Mark Driscoll, but not because of Matthew 18, not because John Lindell is mad at him, but because of who Mark Driscoll is. And also, probably shouldn't be messing around with John Lindell either. <laughs> like, uh, again, this this to me is just like, hey, uh, you know, there's there you might hear some things about me, and I just want you to know that it's not right. You know, like it feels like that kind of a thing. And that just to me is a huge red flag. And I get that yeah, as a pastor, sometimes you got to like wade into the murk to kind of unify your church and make sure like everybody knows, Hey, you know, these leaders that Mark says are involved in sin, they're not, uh, and to bring some unity to the future of this church with his sons, but also it's his sons. And it does feel a little weird to be like, Hey, you know, I'm going to air out all the text messages and the voicemails so that you guys know that these guys are okay. They should already know that he's okay. Um, but it's it's a weird video. It's a weird story. And I'll still be covering it if something else happens. But hopefully on Monday we'll be talking about Doug Wilson and that Tucker Carlson interview. Because I have some thoughts about that. That's probably the next time you will see me. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, think about subscribing unless you're one of the Drisky fanboys. Then, uh, you know, before you hit enter on that weird message, just just think about it for a sec. Uh, and I know it's a cliche, but what would Jesus do? <laughs> what would Jesus do with that comment? Maybe don't leave it. I don't, I don't care to read it. It'll just go into a spam thing, but like, you don't need to do that. Uh, but anyways, I will see you on Monday. Bye.